they try to do the impact analysis of um, uh, of a particular solution all right so so the question here is how do we bridge this gap you could say how do we bridge this terminology gap right between it operations team and the security needs which are being imposed or called for by your security team right and we also know that what could make your organization more vulnerable to cyber security attacks is that lack of synergy between it operations team and the security team right so we need to work on this synergy to bring them both together so that they can function in a much optimized fashion all right so for example what if your security team discovers a breach for example they they get to they come today morning and they discover that there is a particular breach which is uh, or or let's say that there is a software which is having a potential of causing a breach but it operations team are kind of slow to react to that right or it operations team try to correct a particular application failure that's actually a system hack for example it could be installing a you know a masqueraded hack or it could be installing a malicious ha uh, patch all right so with more surface area to cover right more more mission critical assets to protect more sophisticated threats uh, to to cover right so security issues are kind of increasingly complex and we know that the applications are kind of agile in nature they almost change on daily basis we see that today we have some other framework and then tomorrow we might have to jump on to some other framework so whole industry is kind of agile in nature so we need to have a solution right which can address this whole agility and uh, kind of transformation that the it infra infra infrastructure is going through so these two teams must find a way to work together better to identify and protect against the vulnerabilities that your infrastructure as a whole might be exposed to for example the endpoints that you might have the servers that you might have all right so so the whole part is that we need to make sure that our it infrastructure is hygienic enough so as to bring down or you could say that decrease the surface area of the attack so we need to have right amount of patching the right, right amount of application controls on what is to be executed and what is not to be executed. We need to have the remediation procedures. We need to have various other principles that we need to follow in order to make sure that we have IT operations team and the security team work together. Right, so, so when it comes to LDSS, which was earlier called as Landis Security Suite, which has now been acquired by Ivanti, bridges that particular gap between IT operation needs and the security needs which are being imposed by your security team. So it's always better to have this one product instead of having a huge product pool as well. Right. So Ivanti Endpoint Manager is, a, is known to be, which, is, which, is, which was earlier called as Landis Security Suite, is a legacy product. It's been there for more than 20 years and has been standing as a leader in most of the reports by uh, prestigious market research organizations such as uh, Forrester. You can see that Landis is standing as a leader over here. Right. So it has been recognized to be a very advanced endpoint security suite by most of the prestigious uh, market research organizations, right? So, so if we talk about the benefits that LDSS or Ivanti EPM has to offer, so we can say that the Ivanti EPM endpoint manager follows a four step principle to ensure endpoint security. And if we talk of the four step principle that Ivanti EPM has to follow, they should be understand, as in understand the endpoints position endpoints presence and the kind of communication that it is doing right protection protect the endpoints by consolidating various technologies such as uh, antivirus right amount of application control device control etc we'll have a deeper look into the protection when we when it comes to the protection slide of it all right and then detect as in detect suspicious behavior exhibited by application endpoints etc and finally respond to the threats as in the response is uh, you know expected to be automated here so Ivanti EPM understands position and uh, inventory or you could say presence of a, a endpoint after doing a discovery and configuration management on it right so well if we were to talk about the discovery that Ivanti EPM does Ivanti EPM does the discovery by pushing agent onto the endpoint which is doable right from the Ivanti EPM suite. So all you need to do is just, just 
discover a particular device and at the time of discovering what it does is that it looks for computers or you could say it looks for endpoints by doing it could be virtualized it could be a server it could be a workstation it could be anything it doesn't matter all right so what it what you have to do is when you initiate a discovery what it does is it initiates a icmp ping sweep right by default this option uses the netbios information or netbios protocol to gather information about the end systems right so it is discovering for all the endpoints that you might have at the same time running the netbios to make sure that it collects all necessary information about the endpoint right then you push the agent onto it and then what agent does is that it collects all the information that could be your hardware inventory details your software inventory details etc right additionally it does os fingerprinting to gather information about operating system and to uh, perform the os fingerprinting it leverages nmap operating system or nmap o all right and then it can also use snmp to discover the devices then uh, it's quite interesting to know that you could also do a little bit of your asset management or you could so by uh, importing the add on of ivanti asset manager onto the endpoint security suite all right as in you could maintain the life cycle you could maintain the licenses and contract information of the devices or endpoints that you have might have discovered at the time of running a particular discovery all right as a result it's able to fetch all the details that includes your software and hardware your application inventory etc furthermore epm provides advanced discovery capabilities by using extended discovery also called as xdd where it can listen to art broadcasts and web signals so since it is able to listen to the art broadcasts it's quite it's quite uh, easy for it to understand what are the various endpoints which are not managed by uh, ivanti suite so let's imagine that let's consider that you have a switch and behind the switch you have 10 endpoints amongst which you have installed the endpoint agent onto 10, uh, five endpoints so what these five endpoints will do is they are not just these five endpoints all the 10 endpoints that you have they are going to send the arp requests onto the switch and now each and every one will respond to it so based on the responses that it is getting it is going to find out the number of devices which are present behind the switch and it gets to know that okay now that i have 10 endpoints present and amongst these 10 endpoints i have the agents on five of them so it would say that okay these are the five agents or these are the five endpoints in which the agent is missing so these can be classified as unmanaged assets right so additionally you can also configure the compliance module all right so it comes with a additional comp uh, compliance module using which you can at the time of performing a particular scan right you can you can find out how compliant an endpoint is to the compliance standards that your that your organization might be adhering to all right for example let's say that you were to let's say that you you are implementing a ivanti epm solution in one of the banks banks obviously stick to pci compliance so you can just enable the pci compliance check and at the time of you doing the scan post the agent pushing what you could do is you could get to know if if your endpoints that you have discovered and uh, managing managed endpoints are they really adhering to the pci compliances that your organization would prefer to adhere to right additionally uh, in order to stay you know uh, in order to stay away from the vulnerabilities you can also initiate scap scans right scap scan is, uh, specifically looks for scap vulnerabilities where it can where, where scanning and the remediation both of them can be automated so some of the benefits of uh, having the configurational management alongside the compliance module is that you can learn about the potential attack vectors that could be present inside your organization itself and since you have the compliance module intact you can comply with the regulations which are being imposed onto your organization right it's always critical to decrease the attack surface to ensure the it hygiene we know that very well right and in order to ensure that your infrastructure is hygienic enough you need to have right amount of protection in place right and in order to make sure that your organization or your endpoints are safe and being protected from a, a, a multi layered approach or multi layered security right ivanti does it has various other features to offer to make sure that your the protection is intact for example it has the uh, patch management feature application control antivirus device control etc we'll have a look into each and every one of them 
Right. So now, since I mentioned that it's it's kind of critical to to decrease this attack surface area to stay hygienic. Right. So you can ensure the softwares are, are always up to date by patching both native OS and third party applications that are running inside your endpoints. Right. For the, the native patches as in the operating system level patches, for example, in, in your infrastructure, all your endpoints are Windows uh, endpoints are, are running Windows operating system. So you could apply native native OS patching using which all your system updates would be performed. System patching would be performed. And let's assume that you're using a third party software such as Adobe or Office 365 in order for those to get patched. Right. You need to have the patch management module or third party ma patch management module. So the good part about Ivanti is that it doesn't have two separate modules for uh, operating system patches and third party patches. So both of them have been consolidated and now they are called as the patch management module. That's all. Right. So it's generally very fast and accurate. So what it does is that let's say that uh, let's say that if you were to patch the Adobe application, which is present inside your endpoints. So all you have to do is I mean, all Ivanti does is that at the time of looking for application inventory, as in to find out what kind of applications are running inside your endpoints, it checks that what kind of vendor it is being used, right? For example, Adobe. Then it checks that which application version is being used, for example, Adobe 7. So then it contacts the feeds, all right? And it checks that, okay, what are the various updates that vendor has released for this particular version? What are the various vulnerabilities that vendor has released patch for, right? So based on that information, it checks, do you have the latest patch installed? And let's say that the latest patch is not being installed. It is going to tell you that, OK, these are the patches which were missing and it downloads that patch for you and you can have it pushed and installed all at a single click. Right. So the whole process of patch management is automated. So you don't have to manually do anything. All you could do is that you could just schedule the patch management and it would do it by itself. Right. And along with it has it comes with the bandwidth ma bandwidth management and control feature right? for you to stay more compliant or to make things more easier for you. Right. So. And let's say that you have an in-house application and you continuously perform penetration testing on it. So what you could do is that you could customize a patch for your in-house application. Right. And you could push it across to the endpoints. Right. So. As of now, the supported operating systems are Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Chrome OS, iOS, and Android. So almost all the operating systems are supported. And even to be more granular, even in the Windows, nowadays Windows IoT is also being supported. Right. So now, talking about the application control module, Ivanti endpoint client which you install on the endpoints it gives administra ad administrators a powerful tool for controlling what kind of applications should be running on the enterprise endpoints and how exactly are these applications allowed to execute so you have this granular granular policy intact where you can define what kind of prog programs can it invoke what kind of privileges it should be uh, called with all right so the application control module of the Ivanti has proven to be of the industry standards since, since it is very robust in nature by using behavior recognition techniques to recognize patterns and behavior of the attacks. For example, you could say that, let's say that I have this application which I installed from, let's say, uh, a website. All right. So in that case, it does behavior analysis on it. And how does it do it? So for example, let's consider uh, the case of uh, ransomware protection since it comes with a dedicated ransomware protection for the application control module. So we know that ransomware, uh, a typical ransomware attack happens in a way where you know your encryption routines would be invoked, but your main uh, service which is responsible for invoking the encryption routine that is called as Microsoft cryptographic service that will not be running. So let's say that the Microsoft cryptographic service is running and your encryption routine is being invoked. That's a clear cut indication that the Microsoft cryptographic service that is the one which is responsible for running the encryption routine. But let's say that the encryption routine is being invoked, but the cryptographic service is off. That clear, that's a clear cut indication that your system or your endpoint is having an endpoint. Sorry, is it's having an application which is triggering this encryption routine by not leveraging the Microsoft cryptographic service. 
and that's illegitimate. So based on these behavioral footprints, it's able to tell you that, is it malicious or not? And let's say if it is found to be malicious, it's going to have it blocked. You could take another example. You could say that, let's say that I have an Excel file because most of the attacks these days, it, it, you know, it, a lot of them, a lot of the file based attacks, you could say they happen through the Excel files. All right. If an Excel file has some kind of a macros in it, right, where it has been defined that, OK, if certain conditions are being met, just release the malware or activate the malware. Right. So let's say that it, it comes with an ability to modify registries. It can be blocked because any application, any document shouldn't have any kind of a permission to modify the registries. Right. So in a nutshell, you could say that the application control module is power packed with the uh, uh, behavior based detection or it comes with the behavior analytics as well. Right. So with the device control, you can always impose a restriction for input output devices such as your USB disks, USB, uh, your hard disks, your CDs, DVDs, etc. Right. You could write a policy saying that only, the, for example, let's say that you have a use case where you would want to say that all the USBs should be blocked except for SanDisk. So you could define a policy where you can block everything and just whitelist SanDisk USB as an exception. All right. So you can additionally create a policy to ensure that data inside a device is encrypted. So it, it has to offer you a certain level of disk encryption as well. Sorry, media encryption as well. Right. You can also the good part is that you can also achieve certain level of uh, data leakage prevention by framing a policy saying that what exactly or what kind of data can be copied onto the media when it is being connected. Right. For example, let's say that you have a policy in your organization that all any PDF file is not allowed to um, you know, exit the company infrastructure. You have right Caspi in place. You have right amount of uh, DLPs in place. So in that case, you could also make sure that you're not copying and pasting any PDF related data onto your media by leveraging device control module. Right. Moving forward, then it has a firewall module, which 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 is kind of a complementary to the protection module or protection principle that Ivanti talks about. All right. So when it comes to the firewall module, it has two kinds of firewalls that it has to offer. One is Ivanti firewall. Another one should be Windows firewall. Right. So Ivanti firewall can let you protect your endpoints from unauthorized operations and connections. For example, you can create a trusted list of programs, network scope and connection uh, rules. Right. So you can mention that. All right. Uh, so these are the programs which are allowed to execute. These are the applications which are allowed to execute. And these are the permissions that they should be given, whether or not to give them permissions to modify the registry or even talk to registries. All right. And you can define connection rules saying that, OK, this particular endpoint of mine can be accessible to that particular endpoint on certain ports or it should be blocked totally, be it inside the same subnet. So this acts as an endpoint based firewall where you can frame policies on the basis of endpoints. Right. So it's very easy to deploy the application based firewall, also called as Ivanti firewall. Right. And when it comes to the implementation, you could either deploy it in the listening mode or learning mode or in the blocking mode. The difference being in the case of your blocking mode, you can do you can you define all the policies saying that, OK, these kind of network scopes are to be allowed. This kind of connections are to be allowed and these kind of applications are to be allowed. Or you could just play frame all the block listing uh, blacklisting policies and then just add few as an exception. Right. This is one thing you can do. Whereas in the case of your learning mode, all your applications are allowed to run and execute freely and they are also put in a trusted mode if found uh, you know if it is found innocent or if it is found uh, legitimate it's it will be added to that trusted list of files and it will be allowed to execute even in the future right so this is about your ivanti firewall the second kind of a firewall it can control is your windows firewall for example i have an endpoint Right. I would want to leverage the Windows firewall, which is present inside that particular endpoint. So what I could do is that I can use the uh, Microsoft firewall or Ivanti firewall for Microsoft. OK, and I can frame the policy saying that, OK, these are the inbound rules and these are the outbound rules. And once I do so, when I push the agent onto the endpoint, 
all those policies get framed onto the Windows firewall, right? Well, now talking about the antivirus. So Ivanti antivirus, uh, Ivanti comes with an add-on for antivirus as well, right? So it has two kind of detection and uh, uh, protection mechanisms to offer or techniques, I could say. So it does detection and pre prevention of the virus on the basis of signatures and also on the basis of behavior analysis. Well, when it comes to signature-based protection, what it does is that it maintains this huge database of the signatures. Signatures are nothing but Shaw values or hexadecimal strings. Right. Whenever a packet enters the organization or comes in contact with the endpoint, what it does is that it's going to decode your packet and look for that and extract the hexadecimal string or the SHA value. Right. And then post extracting the necessary values, what it does is it's going to pass throughout the database, which has been assigned for signatures, and it's going to look for a match. And let's say that there is a match being found. It's going to have it blocked for you or it could take corresponding action, which your administrator might have to find at the time of fine tuning the solution, right? So now the second thing is, for example, the signature for a particular packet is not being present. So should it be allowed to bypass? No. So what it does is that it takes the packet onto the behavior analysis engine, where the behavior pattern of an application or a traffic is seen, right? So here it uses a combination of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So what it does is that it collects the machine learning pattern or you could say footprints or behavior of a particular traffic or application, right, using machine learning. And then it forwards on to the AI engine for the final calculation if it is found to be malicious or not. And let's say that if it is found to be malicious, it's going to have it blocked for you or take a corresponding action which your administrator might have to find, all right? The good part about uh, antivirus that Ivanti has to offer is that it can also manage any third party antivirus directly from the Ivanti console. For example, if you have some other antivirus running inside, you can have an API integration, which is kind of it has a huge ecosystem uh, for integration. So you can have it managed right from the Ivanti console. Now, the good part about this is or you could say some of the benefits is that it can manage both it or it can offer protection for both known and unknown attacks. So for the known attacks, you have the signature based detection and for the unknown attacks, you have the behavior analytics engine both at place. Right. So if we if we were to look into the kind of uh, file types which are generally used for the compromise for the comp for the hacking or you could say to compromise the endpoints, we can see here that the widely used ones are documents, doc files, RAR files and JavaScript with JavaScript increasingly uh, increasing in nature on daily basis, you could say that you need to have a protection, right, for JavaScript especially. So JavaScript is not only the file-based attacks. Nowadays, JavaScript can also be used to perform the file-less attacks. So can Ivanti endpoint offer protection for file-less attacks? Yes, it does. So in the case of your file-less attacks, most of the time, or you could say nearly 100% of the time, your behavior analytics engine is the one which acts as a rescuer for that. Well, so this is a bubble chart which demonstrates the kind of uh, extensions or files being used to launch the file based attacks. And you can see the widely used ones are doc, docs, XLSX, XLS. Right? With XLS kind of consistent in nature, that's why I've given you an example of the XLS or Excel based hacking. All right. So, now, the third principle is detect. Detect for the vulnerabilities or potential threats, right? So, Ivanti endpoint can, uh, you know, can detect malicious activity, or you could say that it can detect any kind of a malicious or a, a potential threat behavior on the basis of applications view, query language, and audits and logs that it has to generate, right? Ivanti endpoint. What it does is that it, it does it runs a diagnosis check looking for a suspicious behavior inside an, an application. All right. And at the time of diagnosing a particular application or a traffic, right? Or you could say that any traffic which has been originated from the application, in that case, it would focus on metadata, which would include name of the uh, file, vendor, right? It would check if the vendor is blacklisted or if it is an unknown vendor. Should the vendor be unknown, in that case, it is going to pay special attention to it, checking the IP reputation, vendor reputation, other heuristic checks. 
then it is going to check against the signature database. Should the uh, signature of the application found to be malicious, it's going to immediately block it. Then it checks the application trust level that is purely on the basis of reputation. It checks the activity of an application, such as when was it last run and when was it last installed. Then it looks at the metrics, such as the kind of CPU utilization it is doing, the kind of memory utilization that it is consuming. It also looks for connections that it is forming with, uh, if, if the connection it is forming is with a blacklisted IP address or a malicious IP, it's going to immediately take an action on it, which you might have defined, right? Then the benefit here is that it simplifies detection of malicious behavior on an endpoint. Right, and when it comes to the query language based detection, so uh, what it does is that you can take actions based on the results obtained by querying all the endpoints for a specific inventory data. As in, at the, times of, at the time of you deploying uh, agent onto the endpoint, it runs a discovery, um, a discovery module on the endpoints, discovering all the software inventory, hardware in in inventory, et cetera. So it queries all the endpoints for the inventory data, or you could say specific information, and based on that specific information, it runs through an algorithm giving you out the results. And you could, of course, take result uh, actions on the results which has been returned from the query codes. Right? In the end, you are able to determine if uh, a, a specific malicious pattern is infecting more endpoints. For example, let's say that there was a file-based attack which had happened in your organization two, three weeks ago, and that file-based attack or uh, you could say that that file's SHA value or that bug mark of that particular file is still, still lurking around inside your organization. So what you could do is you could, at the time of investigating a particular endpoint which was attacked, you could extract the SHA value or any hash value or a similar value, all right? And then you could perform a query. You could write a query saying that, hey, in which of the endpoints was this SHA value found? And let's say that the SHA value was found in a couple of other endpoints as well. You might be a little cautious about what is to be done with that particular endpoint. Right. So talking about audits and logs, right, you can monitor the application usage and behavioral pattern of an application by leveraging the application control module of the Ivan PPM. You can monitor log files and folders as well. You can additionally integrate with multiple SIM tools for further investigation. And once you do integrate with multiple SIM tools, or let's say that if you have any kind of a SIM, be it a Splunk or QRadar or whatsoever, so that would act as a complementary solution because you're able to get more visibility onto the endpoints because endpoints are directly interacting with SIM as well, which are directly forwarding all the logs onto the SIM. So, even if there are a couple of unmanaged assets, you still would be having certain level of visibility since you're integrating with a SIM solution. So it's always good to integrate with SIM solution and uh, to get full visibility onto it. Right, so the last principle that Ivanti Endpoint Security follows is the respond, as in, what kind of response can you take? Can your solution possibly take when it is exposed or vulnerable to uh, attack? Right, you can respond to attacks by isolating endpoints from the network or taking other remote actions. So Ivanti does a similar job. First is it is able to isolate from the network, for example. So at the time, since we spoke about ransomware, right, I would like to talk of similar attacks as well. For example, worms or botnets or any attack which has a capability to piggyback inside worm, all right? So we know that worm, worms, uh, you know, worm kind of spreads throughout the network or it has the capability to propagate throughout the network, right? Because of the nature uh, it is developed with, right? So be it ransomware, be it botnet, be it worm, all of them does not really need a network layer to propagate throughout the network. So even if you were to chop off the network layer, it would still propagate throughout the network using the data link layer. Right, so you need to have a solution or a technique to chop off both layer two and layer three channels. Because let's say, uh, you know, uh, if you if you remove the um, if you, if you chop off the internet communication channel, it would stay still take the Ethernet channel and propagate itself. It would reach out to the switch and thereby to the other endpoints as well. Right. So when it comes to Ivanti, it can isolate an endpoint from the network by a single click. And it would just open one single remote connection onto the Ivanti console, which will be bounded. Since it is being bounded, only Ivanti will be authorized to take the remote access and nobody else. 
and all other channels would be chopped off right so let's say a ransomware attack is going on you could just isolate a particular endpoint from the network totally and if it is present if, if the endpoint if the attack endpoint was present in some offshore site you could always take a remote of that and do a necessary remediation for that for example you could install a patch you could install a particular software or you could just perform your further investigation here yeah. Right. The benefit here is that you are able to save the crucial time from detection to preventing the malware from spreading. A couple of other remediation actions that you can take is that you will be able to kill the process remotely by just a single click. All you need to do is that you need to open a pane for a single um, endpoint and you could just click check the running processes and you can just click on it and end the or kill the process here remotely. You can delete files remotely. You can take a remote control of the uh, endpoint, right, which is suspicious uh, or which is suspected of uh, attack, all right, and you can deploy security software or scripts remotely. Other actions include shutdown, reboot, etc. as well. So if you were to do it, you can always take an action right from Avanti console itself, right. And um, if, if we talk about the defense in depth solutions that Ivanti has to offer, so the methodology that it follows is that first it is able to discover the endpoints, then it should be able to patch them, then write appropriate application control rules to get ready for the future attacks, right? And then frame antivirus, or you could say that threat protection policies. And finally, define workflow and perform asset management, right? So. For it to do the discovery job, it uses the native discovery tool, or it can also use third-party discovery tools as well via the API integration as well. So you have the flexibility to do it. Whatever you feel comfortable with, you can have that done. All right? And then you can patch the endpoints using the patch management module of endpoint, of the endpoint manager. And you can perform the application control and privilege management. Right? In the application control, you can define a policy saying that which applications are allowed to be executed and how exactly should they be executing and with what privilege, of course. Then you have the endpoint security module, which includes antivirus, anti-malware, device control, etc. And finally, as a part of secure program management, you need to have right amount of uh, asset management in place so that you can track all your license and contracts. Right, so you're able to achieve all the things such as patch management, vulnerability management, application control, antivirus, um, asset management, service management, etc., through a single console, right? So now, with the Ivanti the EPM in place, you are able to bridge that gap between various teams involved in managing the IT infrastructure of an organization, right? So this brings us to the end of this particular session. So now, the time for Q and A, please. I think these are the only questions uh, up, sir. Again, uh, thank you so much for hosting this session for us. And uh, thanks again to all the attendees for making time and joining the session. We will also be sending you a recording of the same for you all to refer in the future. And in case you have any queries, you all can always write back to us and we will answer all of your questions. Uh, also, uh, in the coming months, we have a lot of webinars lined up and we will share the invites with all of you. And I would request all of you to attend relevant uh, webinar sessions. Again, thanks to everyone and I hope all of you have a great day ahead.